Oh Hello everyone. I'm gonna give it a minute for people to join. We are gonna be reposting this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello everyone. <laughs> We are going to repost this video so that uh, you guys can have this later. This is a DIY hook challenge update. It is our first update since announcing this new venture. Um, hello guys. So our hooks are going. So if you have bought your hook and it has not shipped out yet, this is why um, we are going, going hard in the paint, right? Another. <laughs> yeah. So poor Captain Hook is over here um, getting I'm these. A minute for me. I'm sending one colorful. Hook. Yeah, that's one of our upcoming unicorn release hooks. But you can see, look at these wonderful prime white hooks that are getting ready to be sanded and sent out to anyone who has entered the challenge. But you can see we've got three printers printing these right now. Um, we actually have more than 30 people who have entered the challenge and bought their hooks. So we got the third printer going down here. Let's back that out so you guys can see this shenanigans nonsense. Look yeah, at that. We were, we were supposed to start shipping these hooks uh, on the 20th when it closed, and that way they'd be out by the 1st. But I decided if you pre-order, we'll go ahead and get them out to you. But I didn't know 30 people were going to pre-order these. Yes, so, yes. Thank you for the we're <laughs> working to get these out the door this week. If you have ordered them, they're either on the way or will be on the way. Yes, and uh, you do get shipping notifications through Etsy. So if you have not gotten a tracking number yet, we have not shipped your order yet. This is yours. If you haven't gotten it yet, this is yours. Right yes, here. <laughs> right here. Those are our new hooks. So um, yeah, we just wanted to give you guys an update that we are hard at work getting these ready. Um, they are technically usable hooks. They are sanded, so they are not going to snag your yarn. They're not going to have the smooth coverage. No glide. Uh, there's no, there, there's no good glide because um, we are not resin coating them. We do have an option for you to add on uh, a resin coat, so you would have to cover the shipping to get it back to us, but we would then coat that hook that you decorated and send it back to you. So that brings me to my big reason for us going live today is we want to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that you can do to make your life a little easier um, when you're decorating these hooks because it is an interesting surface to work with um, being this printer filament uh, despite being sanded and I don't know, yeah these aren't sanded yet and you'll be able to tell the difference. Let me see if it'll focus for me. There we go. So you can see what they look like before they're sanded. And we're going to sand that down nice and smooth. Um, but you can see these layer lines, um, which makes it a little difficult, especially if you're using Sharpies. You're going to have a little bit of bleed if you're using the Sharpies. Um, you can see that on the first video that I did that's on my page. Um, you can see how the layer lines caused those colors to bleed a little bit. Um, but you can still tell that, tell that they're cool little flowers. Um, so, Captain Hook, why don't you take it away and let them know what they can do to decorate their hooks a little more easily. <laughs> yeah, so um, they're all sanded so that smooth surface kind of helps it drink a little paint or resin or whatever you want to put on it. Sharpie marker, nail polish. And you're sanding the whole thing a little bit? Yep, so it's all getting a rough knock down. You probably want to take it when you get it uh, and maybe wash it down. Maybe rub it down with alcohol if you have uh, isopropyl alcohol. It's mm -hmm. safe to, to clean that surface with just to prep that surface to, to take any paint or any material that you want to put on it. But you totally don't have to. Just give everything a good wipe down to make sure there's no dust or debris anywhere and you'll be fine straight out of the box. Awesome. Well, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna hang out here for just a minute. If you have questions about the challenge, about the hooks, um, anything like that, you can pop those in the comments. Uh, we'll hang out for a minute. But yes, thank you guys for joining in. This is our first update on the DIY hook challenge that we just launched this week. You can check the last video on my feed to get all the details. You can also use the link in my bio if you want to read about the challenge. Um, so there's a link on my new webpage that has all of the information about the challenge and what you could potentially win. 
Um, so for those of you who haven't heard uh, all of the details yet, um, we are taking the entries by you purchasing the hook and we'll ship it to you. And then you have to submit a photo or post a photo on Instagram. So if you are on Instagram, obviously, if you're watching this live video, you are on Instagram. Um, all you have to do is post the photo to your feed. Um, you'll just have to use, uh, you'll have to tag uh, my account and at will print for credits and use our hashtag DIY challenge so we can find your post. And then we will be judging for most creative hook design. And the winner will actually win five, uh, a set of five custom hooks. Um, they can choose their sizes. That would have to be within our range. Obviously, we right now we make 10 millimeter and up. Uh, no 13s. Um, <laughs> no 13th floor here. Yes. Um, but you would get to choose your sizes. You would get to choose your color. Um, we would work with you to find a filament that you like. You can have regular coating. You can have glitter coating. Um, so it should be a really fun not just to see everybody's designs, but you know, whoever the winner is, we'll get to work with you one on one to create a really fun, magical hook set for you. Uh, let's see. So we have a question: If we use paint, do you recommend a certain kind, Captain? Uh, acrylic is pretty good. Anything acrylic. Cool. Yeah. I wouldn't be using oil paints. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, so acrylic paints. What is the what's the paint that we have upstairs that I used that was like a UV reactive? Oh, uh, that paint sucks. I mean, well, I mean, I used it. Yeah, it, it's cheap. I don't recommend any of those UV or black light paints. I mean, you can find different brands on Amazon uh, that are decent, but all of them are kind of crap. Yeah. Um, US Art or uh, the Apple Apple. The apple. <laughs> the one with the apple? The paint with the apple? <laughs> yeah, I, I can't think. I haven't slept since Sunday. Yeah, you guys have him working hard on these hooks, guys. <laughs> yeah, and these, we didn't say this. These are uh, all of the hooks in the DIY challenge. They're 18 millimeter. These are our Mark II hooks that we haven't really announced yet. True. So these have an improved neck design, improved internal infill. The improved bottom stamp. These are the the 2.0. These are all of the improvements that we made over our original hook design, bundled into one awesome crochet hook. So these will be released as official hooks moving forward after the DIY challenge. But anybody that has signed up for that will get the new style hooks with all of the new features and benefits. Yeah. So you're kind of getting a sneak peek into yeah. what's to come. Um, those hooks will start being made regularly after our unicorn release. Um, and maybe some of the unicorns. Our unicorn releases are Mark II. Yeah, they, they're the, they, they're, they, don't have the, they don't have the full features of the Mark II. Okay, but, they're getting there. They're practically there. Yes, yeah. but after the unicorns, it will definitely, they'll all be the new new. There was one small change after the unicorns. They gave us... Mark II, which are all of the DIY hooks. Yes. But the unicorns have a lot of the special features included. Yeah, one thing that's interesting about, um, especially the 18 millimeter, so the 18, and let's see if we have an 18 to compare over here. Yes, we do. I'm going to show you guys the difference. All right, so at least some of the differences. One of the things that I noticed about our 18 millimeter hooks, like this one, this is a, a mermaid. It's hard to see the color on here. Um, and it is not, of course, not going to want to focus. There we go. Yeah, but if you notice, it's it's actually, it looks kind of skinny right here where the base attaches to the cone. And that's actually because this, this smallest part right here is smaller than the 18 millimeter neck right here. Um, and that was because I wanted it to have that handle, that grip, you know, here. So what I did with these, they have a teeny bit more length. There we go, so I'll show you. So you can see that the grip is actually just in that center portion of the hook. 
So there's not gonna have that kind of weird top heavy feel um, because this part down here is the same size as this part up here. And then you've just got that ergonomic grip right in the middle. Um, a lot of times what you'll notice is when you get hooks from other places that are up to this size, actually anywhere, usually from 16 and up, you're gonna have a straight, completely straight hook. You're not gonna have that ergonomic grip. And I know that this is not a big difference. I mean, that's not a huge change, you know, right here in the middle for this grip, but it's just enough to make that difference. It's just enough to add a little bit extra to make it a little more comfortable when you're working with it. So that's one of the biggest, That's this is actually one of the biggest changes because if you get up to the 19, um, then it's a straight body. It doesn't have the extra grip here. And that's because for me, when I made a larger grip on, that was larger than the 19 millimeter, it actually caused a little bit of pain. It was just a little too big. Um, so the 18 is the last one to have any sort of extra ergonomic grip here. And then from there, it's just a straight hook. But that's one of the big differences. You can see that there's a teeny bit more length. It's just enough we've had, I realized after making these that I really choke up on my hooks. I hold them really high. Um, and a lot of people like to hold them a little bit lower. So we added just a few centimeters, I mean millimeters of length to the hooks just to give a little bit extra wiggle room for those of you who hold your hooks a little bit lower down. Um, so we're constantly improving, we're taking your feedback, we want these to be great. Um, so we're super excited to hear what you guys think. Anyone who has joined our challenge, who's bought your hook, you are going to get one of our newest versions of the hooks. So we're super excited to see what you guys think. Um, and really excited to see your designs. I mean, this is going to be really fun, and we can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I've had people say that they're going to use um, some of those press-on nails, um, you know, the press-on nail polish to, to coat them. So really, you can do whatever you want, get super creative. Um, Somebody you, better be bedazzling a hook is all I can Yes, we I want some... bedazzled hook, I'm going to be real disappointed. We want some sequins, sequin, uh -huh. sequins. So yes, um, do whatever you want. The, there, it is not a criteria of the creativity of the challenge that your hook also has to be functional. <laughs> so if you end up bedazzling your hook and you realize now this means I can't use it, um, that's fine. It's a great photo prop, right? I mean, we have people all the time that buy hooks as photo props. So um, we're super excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably it for our first update. Like I said, we now have over 30 people who are joining in on the challenge for sure. Um, and so... Two weeks left? 10 days? 11 days? Yes, yeah, so the 20th. This month, the 20th of June, is the That's last the day that you can order your hook. It's the last day that you can technically enter the challenge. Um, that gives us enough time to get everyone's hooks out by the 1st of July. Um, Hands by the first yes. Um, but we can't control what USPS does. Yes, and that brings me to um, we do have two entrants so far that are international. So just know we are going to do our best to get your hooks out quickly. Um, but I know that might mean you have uh, a little bit longer of a wait time. But we are allowing international entrance um it just you may take a while you gotta get on your horse if you're international yep so go ahead and make your order um get a good plan together and be ready to rock and roll yes so uh but we're super excited like i said so you can see we got three printers going right now making these hooks captain hook's hands are practically bleeding trying to get them oh no just practically <laughs> sanded right it's okay he's a fisherman he's used to getting his hands cut up it's okay <laughs> Well, and that's the, the devil's in the details with these. Like, I can sell these hooks straight off the printer, and you're not going to be able to duplicate what I'm doing here. Like, you'd be able to get close, but, like, that that is a mighty fun hook right there. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. So just the difference between when the supports are peeled out, if you want to zoom in. Yeah, yeah, those. yeah. Let me see if I can. It doesn't want to let me. <laughs> All right, let's bring it over here and see if we can get a different background. There we go. All right, so you guys should be able to see the difference in a smoothed sanded hook and one that is not. I mean, it's a huge difference, guys. So that is done with all of our hooks. Um, 
Made by hand. Yes. Shaved by hand. Shaved by hand, exactly. You can even see a little bit of fuzz off the top of that one, so we have to get rid of any little fuzzies. Yeah, they normally um, sit up here uh, on the counter once they're dry, and I'll look at them and hit them one or two more times. Like, I can see a few things on that once it dries off. There's a spot that I want to hit again. Yep. I'm pretty particular. So what are you doing with the sanding? I would love for you to talk about that really so, quick. <clears throat> this is wet sanding. Definitely want to keep water going on this so there's no dust. No special debris. sandpaper? Yep, special sandpaper. Uh, there's a couple different brands. I love this Blue Dragon as opposed to... It's really easy to see if it's a blue sheet versus a yellowish yeah, brown blue sheets. Uh, these just last longer. They use like an electro bonding and you can see like where you burn through. Mm -hmm. But I can probably get... 30 hooks out of a single sheet of this whereas you might get 10 out of a sheet of this so it's and why are better. you wet sanding versus dry sanding so it helps to remove the material from the print since we're sanding plastic plastic tends to get really warm really quick and it'll just kind of melt it all together and make it nasty so you don't want to use power tools obviously no dremels yep no dremels no orbital sanders uh so the wet sanding just keeps everything clean, doesn't embed any of this material into your print surface, um, what and about keeps the temperature breathing? Down. Oh yeah, so <laughs> there's that. Uh, you know, silica dust or any any kind of dust are really terrible for you. Fortunately, we're not generating any of those kind of dust. Uh, there is some dust that can be generated sanding PLA, which is not good to breathe. Um, the wet sanding keeps all that down. So there's no dust generated. So this is why he does not have a respirator on right now, yeah. despite the fact that he is sanding plastic. If you were going <laughs> to be sanding anything dry, I highly recommend not to do that. But if you must, then definitely wear an N95 mask. Not the bullshit you've been wearing because of COVID, but like a legitimate there respirator. They are. Yes, so, so we do have them. Yeah. <laughs> VOC chemicals, which have volatile organic compounds, you can smell something funky, chances are you need to be wearing one of these. Yes. Oh, we have the inside of these hooks, too. You wanted to talk about that. Oh, yeah. Oh. So okay. Oh, nope. Upgrade. This one is not. Do we yeah, have any that's that a aren't? Great, great segue. That's Mark 1. Mark 1. Okay, you can this see the inside. So, this one looks like a grid. If it does not want to let me. There we go. So that's the grid. So you can actually see straight down in there. And that's what's different between like injection molded. Like every other hook you probably own that's injection molded is hollow on the inside. Mark two. Check that geometry out. Yeah. So you can't. The only way to generate internal structures is with 3D printing. So with a with a normal grid, conic, cubic infill like this, that's pretty strong, but this allows it to flex a little bit so you can really turn the gas on on these and you're not I can't, I can't break these hooks like yeah maybe somebody in them tougher than me can but these are rock solid well and we talked about that once before we did a test where we were able to break a hook but it was by slamming it down slamming it on the concrete yeah. yes so as long as you're not slamming your hooks down on the concrete you should be good well, we could sit and talk about this forever, but we really just wanted to give you that update. So be sure if you're going to join in on our DIY hook challenge, if you want to decorate your own hook for the chance to win a custom set of hooks from us, be sure to get your order in by June 20th. Um, you can order your hook using the link in my bio. There is a link directly to Etsy where you can buy the hook, and there is also a link to the page on my website that gives you all of the details as well as our initial announcement uh, video with the details. Um, oh, we do have a final question. Is there a weight difference on Mark One and Mark II? Slightly, like two grams on an 18 millimeter. So <clears throat> probably not enough for anybody to even notice, but the, we did increase the density on them just slightly mm -hmm. to give them a little better balance so that it didn't just feel so featherweight that it actually had some balance yep. to it. Compared to any other hook on the market, ours will probably still be one of the lightest hooks you purchase that is in this size range.
Yeah, pound for pound, I don't know that you're going to find, even though, it, like, a teak wood hook is going to weigh more than these wood. Yeah, I think that, sh I think and it's something that might be lighter would maybe be those, like, blue plastic hooks from Walmart, yeah, but... Yeah, anything that's injection molded that's hollow, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe be lighter. But you're going to learn very quickly that those blue hooks are not going to be very comfortable to work with for a long time. But I keep them because that was my first ever jumbo hook. Straight from, straight from Walmart. <laughs> Come a long way. Baby. Yeah, right? Well, and that's the whole point of these is that there were things that you knew that you could design better based on your experience with mm -hmm. miles and miles and miles of crocheting that you've done. <laughs> So now we've got something that kind of ticks all of those boxes that you can set it up and stand it up. That was yeah. one of the biggest gripes that you had. The glide, once it's coated, was one of the second biggest gripes you have. And then the fact that you can crochet for hours instead of minutes. Yeah. So it kind of checked all the boxes for you. And I think a lot of other women and makers yeah. uh, will see the same thing. Like these are hundreds of hours in this design and R&D. Yeah. Lots of R&D. And lots of print time. Print hours. Alright guys. I'm going to flip this around really quick. So you can say hello. And we're going to sign off. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye guys.